So welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim Corpus, composer and sound designer. Uh, we're going to take a look at some Touch OSC stuff from a new angle, trying this out. So these tips come in from uh, questions that folks like you sent to me, and I figured these answers could be helpful to everyone else. Also, thank you for your support. We have over a thousand subscribers to the channel now, uh, and that's awesome. So let's dig in and look at some Touch OSC. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is a question that I got. This is kind of similar to uh, things I showed in the past with local messages, uh, but I see a lot of people asking questions about scripts. There's a lot you can do with local messages. So we're going to show how you can highlight an object with a local message. So we're here in Touch OSC and we have everything connected. Uh, my iPad is also connected. And so what we're gonna do is build a fader and a label. And these are basically, we're gonna have this label highlight a color when we use the fader. And so to do that, we're gonna use a local message. So I showed this before in one of the other videos, but you can just hold Alt and then select the object that you want to start the local message on and then uh, drag it to where you're kind of sending that information. So what's going to happen is when I touch this fader, I want this label here just to highlight. So let's take a look at this and what we're going to do, label one, that's what we're going to impact. And we're going to change the color. So let's go with uh, uh, the color green. So we have our color. And what we need to do now is change it from where it's at right now with the X. Because if I was to change this, you can see I'm changing the color of the label, which that could be useful. Maybe you want orange, maybe you want this other color. But basically right now, the fader is controlling the, uh, the full color of the label. But we want it to just highlight when we touch it. So we're going to undo the X value. We're going to select touch. And the source, we're going to change this to touch as well. So now when we move our fader around doesn't matter where we move it it's just when we're touching it this label is now highlighted a new color now something like this could be really useful if you have a full template with a lot of different faders or a lot of different parameters that can be controlled by your fader uh, this way you can drag that arrow up a uh, local message to each one and every time you're impacting something it will show in a label what you're impacting Cool, so let's take a look at another one. And this also similar to something we took a look at before. Uh, we're gonna set the parameters within a fader with a couple different buttons. Uh, and from there, we're also going to send to a label the amount that our parameter is at. So let's go ahead, like always, let's add a button. And I'm gonna make three of these. So copy, paste, copy, paste. And then let's add a fader. and a label. I'll we'll shrink that down here. I'm gonna make all of this stuff, actually I'm gonna make these blue. And we're gonna imagine that this fader is sending something like a CC message like velocity. So when we click this one, we want it to go to the top here, we'll go to the middle and here back down to the bottom. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're going to take this button here and alt, hold alt, and then we'll drag it and we're gonna get an, uh, a local message down here. So this local message, what we're gonna do is we're going to set the value of where we want this uh, fader to be. So we've selected where it's landing, which uh, you could also do with the eyedropper, which is this fader. And we're gonna change the touch to a value, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that value to something we want. Now, when working with a fader, if I was to push one right here, and if I push that button, it's going 100%. What I want it to do is go to, let's say 10%. So we're gonna go 0.1. And now when I hit that, you can see it's on the iPad, it's come up only a tiny bit. So let's do something similarly with this top one. 
holding alt, let's drag it in, change the touch to a value, and let's set this to 90%, 0.9. So now when I hit that, you can see it's gone all the way up. And when I hit the other button, it goes back down. So right now when I hit it, it's kind of jumping to the top and then coming back down. It's hitting this number first. Also, if we were to put this at 0.5, it would go down to 0.5 first and then jump, but that's not what we want. So what we need to change here, we can set this for zero right now, and we'll set this one to touch. So now when we push our button, it just goes directly to the number that we put it at. So let's set this guy right here, this middle one. Let's hold Alt, drag it into here, and let's do the same thing. So we're gonna do touch, not that. And we want this to be 0.5. And this is also gonna be the value. So let's go ahead and try that. And we can see that's set this to uh, 50. I use a button similar to this for controlling velocity in my MIDI template all the time, so I find this super useful. So now we have this uh, set where we can send our fader to different preset amounts, and if we wanted to, we could add some text here and maybe hide the background, hide the outline, and we could say that this was, you know, 90%, something like that and we could throw that over here. But we also have this label. So we don't want to uh, send a message now from these buttons to tell what this label is. We want to control it from the fader. So let's Alt, click here and drag that to the label, and now we have our local message. And right now, if we were to move this, nothing's going on. So if we change this here, the value to text, now if we push it up, we see we're getting this uh, decimal number. Um, it's a percentage, right, showing between 0 and 100%. If we change this to an integer, it would just be between 0 and 1. But what we want to show is CC numbers. So that would be between 0 and 127. So we can click over here and put 127. And now when we move that up and down, it's going to show us between that number. So if I hit uh, our bottom button here, it's saying it's at 13, the 50%, 64, and 90%, 114. Something else you could do with this would be attach MIDI messages to those buttons and to the fader so that that CC message is also going to your DAW. All right, let's take a look at one more. Uh, and this one was really interesting, which was having a pop-up message that would tell you kind of the value of what you're doing on your fader. And then when you're not touching it, it would disappear and it would just show your track name. So let's add a fader and we'll add a label. So let's move these things over here and a new fader and a new label. And let's make these, ah, we have no green in here. So green it is. So I'm gonna zoom in here. And I'm going to set this uh, to kind of one of the grid points and you'll see why in a second. But when we move this fader up, what we want to see is the value of the fader of where it's at in a label. And we just saw how to do that, so we're kind of going to duplicate that process. So first we have to hold Alt, drag it up there, and we'll change this to a value, text, and 127. So now when I move this up and down, it's showing that, and I'm going to change this to an integer so it's a whole number. Great, so that's what we want to see. Let's add another label. And we're going to keep this red just for right now. You'll see why. And let's give this a name. So this is track one. And what we want is for this green label to show up only when we're touching the fader. And the rest of the time, it's going to show this track one. So let's send this to the back. We're going to arrange, send that to back because we want it to go behind this. 
Um, but first, we need this to disappear when we're not touching this fader. So let's add another local message, alt, drag that up here. And this is gonna control its visibility, right? So, and this is on when we're touching it, not when we're having a value. So we're gonna change the value, we're gonna have touch, and we're gonna change uh, what we're doing here from, uh, you know, like a touch value, we're gonna change this to the property and visible. And so we'll impact how visible it is. And then we can also change this over here to touch. So now, when I'm touching this fader, I can see the amount that my fader's at, but when I'm not touching it, it disappears. And you can see that pretty clearly on the iPad. So now we're gonna move this red track in over here and it's locked behind. And now you can see on my iPad, it's track one. But then when I'm moving my fader around, it'll show me what the value is. And that just kind of functions as a pop-up. And of course, you could put this pop-up anywhere you want. Maybe you want it at the bottom. So it's there until, or it's not there unless you push it. But I do love the idea of having it up here. Uh, that's just super useful. And of course, you could make this also red so that they're always kind of hiding within itself. And it looks like it's changing the name of the label. So hopefully these tricks will help you with your template. Uh, you can do all sorts of cool things with local messages. So keep checking those out. Um, I'm always finding more and more ways that they uh, can bring a lot of good to a template and you can avoid doing some hard scripting. So hopefully this information helps you with your touch OSC template. Uh, you learned something today and you can like this video and be sure to subscribe to the channel. We have lots more that we're going to look at and you can also check out my music on Spotify and check out my latest release. W is for waves right here on YouTube. All right. I'll see you next time.